We're going to look at how to get started with Tecla Structural Designer. When you first open the software, you can edit your general settings for all future models. We can also look at the material databases and add in new section sizes. We will look at this in later videos or please ask technical support for further information. Begin by hitting new on the far left to start a fresh model. This brings up our model related tabs such as integration, model and load. If we go to our model settings, we can see that we're working to Eurocode in the UK. Many other codes are available, including British standards or any of the American codes. Always try and set your design code as step one. You can change partway through as well though. We will enter our model geometry using levels and grids. We'll start with our levels and this will create the corresponding views in our structure tree on the left hand side. By default, you get two views, 3D and the base view. Flick between these in the tabs at the top as shown. This video will be building a model from scratch. You can also import DXFs, import Revit models, Tecla Structures models, or a few others as well. In the construction levels, we start to build our main plan views, which we want to work in. Press insert above and type in either the spacing or the level to define these. You can also set the physical offset, including slab thickness as shown. This automatically creates the plan view for the level. Double click to open. If you have a DXF to work from, use a 2D view and import this using the grid line option. We will use the rectangular wizard to create some grid lines to model on instead. We can change the name and the color of each grid set as well as the levels that it's active on. I advise that all model origins stay at 00, zero for simplicity. From here, we simply define the spacings and hit finish. This example is a basic 2D frame, so we'll set the Y direction to zero counts for now. We now have some levels and grid lines and we can start modeling. We'll start with steel columns. Hit the command to activate it. A yellow prompt bar appears at the top. This tells you how to complete the command. In the bottom left, we have our properties. This helps us to define our member. The first section is to define height. Ours is from the base to our first floor. We can also choose the fabrication, rotation, and so on. All of this can be edited afterwards if you want to make changes. Confirm the rest of the properties and go down to the auto design option. I want Tecla Structural Designer to choose the most appropriate section, so I'll be leaving auto design ticked. If you're setting your own section size and want this to be checked, then make sure the auto design setting is unticked. Underneath this tick box is the design section order. This is the list from which it's going to be choosing our section size. You can create your own bespoke list and edit the existing list as well. We'll select the UC column list and edit it to see our options. This brings up all the available UC column sections which TSD can cater for. Where they're ticked, it means they're selected in the auto design command. We can untick any we don't wish to be considered during the design process. We can also manually or automatically change the order of these. If I select criteria, I can choose to sort the list by mass if the weight is going to be critical to the structure. This then reorders the sections to prioritize the least mass. You can insert members by clicking on a grid intersection in the plan view or by windowing over to create multiple members at the same time. Next step is creating a frame so that we can have a look at an elevation of our structure. We do this by going to the model tab, clicking on the frame command, and then clicking on a grid line. Again, using the model tab, select the steel beam command. Steel beams will default to a single span, whereas concrete beams will default to be continuous. The first checkbox toggle this on and off. We can window or click the individual points, double clicking the last point to complete. This then puts in a multi-span continuous steel beam. When we select it, we can see the individual span highlights and the central node points. These midpoints allow us to create cranked members or to split up continuous spans into single spans. The properties for the steel beam are almost identical to that of the column. Again, we're going to be letting TSD auto design the section for us using the UB beam list. For any commands that are active, you can press escape or double right click to exit. We can see that the beam has been offset from its analytical wire. This is based on the slab offset we initially specified in the construction levels window. Next, let's add some loading onto the members. By default, TSD created the load cases above. You can add, remove or edit these. As we will potentially resize the members, the weight is calculated automatically. You can override this if you like, as you can with the slab self-weight. As we're focusing on the 2D frame only, we'll add the slab self-weight in manually. There are a number of load case options, wind, snow and seismic. Once created, select the load case to add it to the bottom. This then enables all the loading options in the tab above. Panel loads are for walls, slabs and wind panels. We will use the member loads on the right. Starting with a full UDL, the load value can be altered to suit. You can also edit the direction and projection of the load in the properties window. For a full UDL, simply select the member. However, for a partial UDL, you will need to use the snap points available to you. The nodes are at quarter, 
third and half points. You can also press F2 on your keyboard to type in a specific distance. This is based on the nearest end to your mouse. With some loading in place, we next need to create some combinations. You can either do this manually or by using the combinations generator. We'll keep this example simple by turning off the additional combinations. There are further options which we will explore when we have some wind load cases. All the factors are taken from the design code you selected initially. Head to the Analyze tab and start with a first order linear analysis. Select the combination and press go. Select the combination at the bottom of the screen and open up some of the results at the top. Support reaction, shear, moment and torsion are some of the options available. The key to this is shape. We have not yet assigned a section size which is appropriate for our frame, so let's do that now. Hit design all and TSD will run through and select an appropriate section size from the list that we've chosen. We can see that the sections have slimmed down and the keys tell us that it is passing. Right click on any member and check member and delve deeper into the calculations which are being done. This gives you a full breakdown of the calculations and utilisation ratios of each check. We can use it to see what's driving the design, in this case the dead deflection. Expand the arrows to see further details on the calculation as well as the clause reference this has been taken from. Thank you for watching.